Hi everyone, I think we're all here. Uh, so just as a quick note, Josh Chapman will not be available to join us today. So we have Will, I know, um, online and um, looks like uh, Joe and Tom both here. So we believe that is our elected representatives all, all here and accounted for. Okay. <clears throat> um, I believe it's our turn to facilitate the meeting. I believe that's right, Tom. Yeah, yeah I think Will did last time. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, let me just get the agenda in front of me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I call this meeting to order at 518. Um, and as we noted uh, with the recording, uh, I am here, Tom Adams, with my colleague, Joe Denunzio from the Davis School Board. And then um, Will Arnold is here from the uh, city of Davis. At this point. I am. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Will, are you gonna turn on your camera or? You uh, remote are in the middle of something right now. I am, is my camera on now? I yeah. am uh, at my daughter's last softball practice before playoffs okay. start tomorrow. So I'm at the UCD, let's see if I can get a shot. I'm at the UCD baseball fields and they're in the uh, batting cages right now. Okay. So remote, but not that remote. Okay, very good. All right. Um, well, let's start with public comment. Do we have anybody at this time signed up for public comment? Not seeing anybody. It then does we'll... not look like any, Tom. What? It does not look like we have any uh, callers or participants. Okay, so now let's go to the approval of the March 16th, 2022 minutes. I hope everyone's had a chance to review them. I um, have, I'll move approval. Oh, thank you. Will, can I have a second? I'll set. Thank I'll you, Joe. Second. This is Joe. All right, roll call vote. Will? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I vote aye as well. The minutes are approved. So now let's go to city district communications. And um, Mike or Matt, which one of you would like to start? Mike, you want to start? Sure, no, no problem. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, oh. thanks. So uh, yeah, just you'll notice too that Kelly Stackowitz normally is uh, with us at these meetings. She is not this week. She's on a long deserved vacation. Um, so she'll be back, back ne late next week into the office here, you got Christina and myself. Christina is helping run the show here. Thank you, Christina. Um, but uh, just general communications, I'd say, um, uh, aside from the items that are on our agenda that we'll talk about today, I'd say, you know, we're just continuing to be vigilant around COVID and our COVID response. Um, obviously we've seen through the uptick the last couple of weeks and local case rates in, in the county and so forth. Um, Thankfully, hospitalizations are staying low and the severity seems to be staying low, uh, but we have seen sort of upticks in our wastewater stream, um, which seem to be commensurate with the local case rates uh, being up a tick um, from what they were uh, even just a month ago. Um, so we're continuing to message uh, around, you know, just vigilance along with uh, Dr. Sisson with Yolo County. I know the school district is doing the same. Uh, and we are still on the trajectory with Healthy Davis together uh, through the end of June to continue the uh, saliva-based testing platform through the end of June. That's now consolidated, of course, at, uh, at really at the Bats Memorial Center as the primary testing site in addition to the ARC on campus. Uh, the South Davis uh, testing site on Research Park Drive wrapped up uh, at the end of April. Uh, and so everything's been transitioned to the vets. It seems to be working fairly smoothly. Uh, certainly if there's any feedback from the district's perspective with that location, vis to be the high school and so forth, we'd certainly love to hear that. We have, I think, uh, pivoted towards trying to make some 
uh, alternative parking arrangements out on the street in front to help free up a little capacity there and to get people sort of in and out uh, relatively quickly. So we are, you know, keeping a keeping a watchful eye uh, on things, um, and but gradually uh, things are coming back to uh, more and more in person events and activities and so forth. We had a uh, outdoor ribbon cutting event, of course, that I know you're all familiar with uh, earlier this week uh, with the new bike ped connection at Olive and uh, Poline. So great to be able to get back to the sort of celebratory uh, events uh, to be sure. So really that's uh, that's my primary announcement. I will say that we all are also gearing up to come back to the council next week at the May 24th meeting uh, with sort of a budget update. We of course are on a two year budget cycle and we have been for a few years now. Uh, so this is more of a mid cycle update for what will be starting uh, July 1 the second year of our two year budget current two year budget cycle. So we're coming to council with that mid, mid cycle update. Um, and, uh, you know, the news is looking uh, fairly positive, uh, I will say. A little preview of coming attractions when that report comes out later this week. Some of our revenues have been uh, better than expected, particularly around sales tax, um, property taxes held, held strong. Um, through the pandemic, but sales taxes bounced back, I think, stronger than, than we even planned, uh, which is fantastic. So um, more to come in, in, on, on the 24th for that. Um, they won't be taking any action on the 24th. We'll get preliminary input from the council and then come back to them in June for basically its adoption of a resolution to, um, uh, to implement the second year uh, spending plan of, of the two-year budget. So that's the updates that I have for today. The rest will address during the agenda items. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, that, Joe or uh, Will, do you have um, any follow-up questions for Mike? I do not. Yeah, me neither. No questions. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, Matt, do you want to? Yeah, thanks, Tom. So we are uh, hanging on by our fingertips here uh, to the end of the year, uh, like most educators uh, throughout the state. Um, we've got just a few more weeks. Uh, some good news this week, the uh, state budget, uh, the, the governor's revise, May revise is looking better than, uh, than it did in January. So that's uh, good for education. Uh, still lots of uh, ground to cover given the uh, significant shortages in employees that we're facing uh, and expect to face uh, in the coming years. Um, but some good, some little bit of good news. Um, we are in the process of hiring uh, five new principals. Uh, so we've got uh, that, those, those moving forward. I know our community's uh, excited and anxious to uh, see who, who is selected for each of those jobs uh, here in the coming weeks. And uh, we also, like uh, the city, had a uh, ribbon cutting this week over at Birch Lane Elementary. Um, build, our NPR building's been in use for the last several weeks, but it was really awesome to have an in-person uh, ribbon cutting uh, for, for, for that project. And it's really been great to see the students use the, use the facility. Uh, Will it NPR is going to be online, Dave, like in the next couple weeks, right? The site will start using it for some very specific activities next week, awesome. but with full full occupancy, probably the following week, we have to get, you know, complete fire alarm sign off and kitchen sign off, but they are going to start some uh, some events in it next week. Awesome. And um, we had a request from Trustee Hyder uh, around safety, uh, state of safety in Davis, particularly in light of uh, 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 local violence. Uh, in Sacramento and things going on around the nation. Uh, so um, I wanted Trustee Adams and Denunzio to know that Mike and I have talked and we'll, we'll start setting up some, uh, some uh, meetings with uh, Chief Pytel uh, to talk through that and decide whether we wanna have any future items at our board uh, on that. And I think that is pretty much it on my end. Okay, great. Um, any follow-up questions for Matt? 
Seeing none. Um, I mean, just a statement. Yeah, uh, Tom, I was going to say just a statement that, you know, obviously the NPRs are a great resource uh, for our students and teachers and staff, you know, but ultimately a great resource for the community at large. And so our expectation is, you know, that they, they, they will begin to serve a function that the prior NPRs did, but somewhat, you know, it was somewhat difficult because they were so small and outdated. And we fully expect that uh, all four of the NPRs will become important community resources. Between the AV, the size, the AV setup we've got, and the stage, I think they're going to be heavy, heavy use on those facilities for the for the next seventy five years, probably. Very good. I hope to book a Led Zeppelin tour in one of the new uh, NPRs. As long as you're playing your new guitar in there, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, discussion items. First, we have the DJUSD strategic plan. And uh, Matt, do you want to start that? Yeah, sure. Um, so we, uh, I think most of you knew, know that we had a strategic plan from 2014 to 19. We achieved a, a ton of great work uh, and improvements to the district, not only setting a cohesive a vision for the district with community buy-in, but uh, strategic goals around formative assessments, professional development, facilities, which we are seeing the fruit of, of that labor, um, and also employee attraction and retention with a specific focus on uh, compensation. Um, through the pandemic, we sort of uh, drifted away from that and feel like uh, now's the time to restart that process and re-engage re our community around the future of our district, uh, update that vision and set new strategic goals uh, for the next five years. Uh, we're expecting that process to kick off in the fall um, and, and hope to uh, engage you all at the city with that uh, discussion as well. I think we've had a lot of great uh, uh, advancement of our, of our partnership and relationship over the years um, and want to think, think about how we can integrate your feedback into uh, and, and partnership into our strategic plan. Hoping to have the plan, the goals itself uh, done around the first of the year and then spend the springtime focused on action teaming and, and, uh, and plan development and how we're going to achieve those strategic goals. So happy to take any questions on that uh, here in the meantime. And I don't know if Tom or Joe, you want to say anything about it either. Joe, do you have any comments or questions? Sure. Yeah, I just say that, um, you know, I think it's vital that we look at uh, the time I participated in the first plan, I thought it was incredibly productive. Uh, it's definitely time for us to do this. I think we'll be looking at, you know, a program at all the things that are important for us and our role, you know, in the community. Uh, and I think, you know, and the realities of, of the fiscal environment going forward and what it's going to look like. And obviously the last two years have been topsy-turvy in so many ways, including fiscally, but trying to look out over the next five, seven, nine years and understanding how to make responsible fiscal choices uh, for the benefit of our students. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the process and I do hope that a number of our colleagues uh, from the city uh, are active participants. Yeah, and I just wanna say we are actually looking not only for city staff, but also city council members to participate in the process. So we'll, consider this an invitation to you and your colleagues to be part of the process. Uh, we, I, I also want to recognize we know that you have your own duties and, and uh, activities to, to, do, to, to do, but any way you can monitor the strategic plan or participate would be welcome. Sure. Okay. I appreciate it. I'll uh, share that with my colleagues. And I just want to say that it's, it's, it's also good to have city um, connections in there because, you know, how we, you know, we, you know, the, the city and the school district share a lot of concerns and, and needs and how we decide um, and what we decide really affects each other. So just, I think this will, if anything, we'll have a better sense of that going into the uh, new strategic plan. That sounds fantastic. And uh, Matt, you and I can talk more about how to best, you know, plug in city, you know, official city representation. 
terms of staff and council and um, you know inputs at the right times you know when as you develop the framework for in timelines and so forth moving forward I'm happy to brainstorm how best how, how we can be uh, uh, most helpful uh, in in the process um, and I, I I presume that a, a big part of the strategic plan for the district is you know talking about what we talked about at our last two by two which is the demographics and projections and housing and so on and so forth definitely yeah okay um shall we go on to facilities and cip project updates mm -hmm. matt do you want to sure. lead that off yeah and dave feel free to jump in we uh continue to move forward with our um projects uh we've got like i said uh will it's coming online here soon north and chavez uh, will be completed this uh, summer. We expect Da Vinci High to be completed at uh, in the fall. And all of the projects at Davis Senior High are uh, kicking off. We've got all the uh, CTE projects, robotics, ag, and auto uh, uh, underway. The STEM building will break ground uh, sometime this summer. Um, we are moving forward with what's called a certificate of participation, which was approved by our board last week. I think we last meeting um, and essentially that is moving forward $25 million in funding uh, this summer and another $25 million in funding in 2025 um, and the board this uh, fall will make some decisions about how to prioritize uh, those monies given that we we had a facilities master plan with uh, projects identified needing to sort of uh, touch base since we've constructed a lot over the last uh, five years. Um, and making sure we're, we're on track for the future. Anything you wanna add, Dave? Yeah, I just wanna add that we are currently in design to add three additional tennis courts to Davis High School. The new STEM building will land on top of three existing tennis courts. So we're hoping to have those tennis courts built just as quickly as possible. Um, also, we're in the final week of the second round of community outreach for our solar implementation. We're dividing that into phases. So our phase one projects are those projects that we feel we can get to construction during summer of 23. So uh, the tennis courts and then solar also. Thanks. Okay, any comments or questions for uh, Matt and Dave? None for me. All right. Um, all right. So no, let's. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Will. Uh, shall we move on then to end of school year activities? I can, uh, Tom, if I, if I may, um, I sure. have a couple of updates on city CIP uh, project updates I can provide just very briefly uh, on some of our projects that may be of interest, uh, in particular, intersect with the school district interests. Um, uh, one is uh, the Anderson uh, Road uh, Chavez Elementary uh, grant project. Uh, we're going to be meeting soon, uh, including Matt and myself uh, and some of our key team members. Um, David could be in part of that meeting as well. Uh, we'll be meeting very soon to go over timelines moving forward and uh, objectives uh, so that we can uh, work out the timing for the next steps of that grant that we were awarded. Um, and uh, implementation timeframes and just, you know, coordinate uh, on that. So more to come on that. And again, you know, big uh, hats off to everyone here for the success in securing that grant uh, for those uh, frontage improvements. So looking forward to working with you on that. Um, we have uh, uh, 14th Street. Uh, so, you know, we did the pilot uh, projects and so forth on 14th Street. Uh, we are currently at 60% design plans uh, for 14th Street. Uh, and if you have not already heard, you will be hearing from us very soon to uh, schedule stakeholder engagement uh, discussions and meetings uh, around those plans uh, in June. Um, uh, so we'll be getting together with you uh, in short order to, uh, to discuss those. Um, um, and then... Let's see here, a couple other updates. Uh, sports courts, we are, uh, we have for, pretty well wrapped up uh, the first phase of our sport courts uh, update projects where we did resurfacing of our sports courts uh, around town. 
We have a couple more sport, sport courts in town still to complete, and those are uh, going through the process right now. So uh, I think between all of our collective sports courts and the three ones that you mentioned, Dave, that are sort of replacing the ones from the STEM building, uh, I think we'll have a community that's in very good shape on sports courts for some time uh, to come. So that'll be, that'll be fantastic. Um, and then last update is uh, we have our slurry seal package. So basically that's our road and bike path, um, you know, pavement package uh, that we do each, each summer. Uh, we have that coming to our council on scheduled for June 14th uh, to get for the bid award uh, for that package. This year, unlike last year, you may remember, you probably do, because uh, I think we all do. Last year, we had quite a few major arterials uh, that we were doing work on. Uh, Cobell, F Street, uh, uh, we had uh, uh, Fifth Street um, out in front of your own courtyard and so forth. A whole bunch of major streets that were repaved and slurry sealed. This year, the focus is just a little preview is going to be much more on local residential streets. Um, so a lot more of the smaller streets and, and more residential neighborhoods this year. So I expect we'll see far less disruption in terms of uh, traffic inconveniences during that construction activity this summer than what we saw last year. Um, and, uh, but we'll keep you informed as to what the package is looking like. And if there are any, th any of the street segments that are, or bike path segments, especially on green belts that are on those uh, you know, safe routes to schools or anywhere near the school sites, we'll be sure to coordinate with you in terms of the timing of those. Of course, we, we do our very best to try to uh, minimize any time overlap with when school is actually in session. Um, so, uh, so we'll coordinate on, on that as well. Um, and I do know, I will note um, uh, Trustee Adams that we, I think we do have a member of the public, looks like with a hand raised as well. So uh, up to you on terms of how you want to manage public comment if you want to do it after each item or, or towards the end of the meeting. Um, <clears throat> do we know if it's relevant to this topic or is it? Uh... I don't yeah. think we know. It looks, I think it's a, a member that is on the Zoom uh, as an attendee. We do not know. Okay. Hmm. Oops. Um, let us, uh, uh, then let's finish the next item and then we'll take a public comment. Okay, and the school year activities. But oh, before we go there, were there any questions for uh, Mike? Uh, this is Will. Uh, no questions. Okay, Thank you thanks. For and Joe, do you have a question or comment? No, no questions. Okay, well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that update. So now end of school year activities. Uh, again, Matt, shall we start with you? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Uh, we have lots of end of school activities uh, happening here over the next several weeks. Uh, really, they kick off next week. We have uh, several promotion and graduation celebrations for Native American students, our Black Student Union, uh, many schools celebrate in a variety of ways, the days on the green, all those sorts of activities as school ends. Graduation week is the week of June 6th. Um, we have our uh, Yolo Solano Center credentialing graduations on Monday, adult ed on Tuesday, King High Wednesday, DSIS and Da Vinci on Thursday, and of course, Davis High on Friday. So busy couple of weeks here uh, wrapping up uh, and uh, plenty to do here as we get get ready for the closeout. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions for Matt? This is Joe. None for me. Okay. No, thank you, Matt. Okay. I know they're not school related activities per se, but there are a couple of other community events that are right around the same time frame. Just to be sure, everyone is. In the fold on them. One is, of course, uh, there's a Celebrate Davis coming up in Community Park on June 3rd, I believe is the date. Um, and uh, so that's uh, going to be happening. Uh, and that's really put on uh, first and foremost by the Chamber of Commerce, but with you know, many other supporters uh, along the way. Um, 
so that look forward to that and then of course we have the july our july 4th celebration this year we're coming back to an in-person celebration after a couple year hiatus uh, including a fireworks display uh, celebrate davis will also have a, uh, a fireworks display although i think it's a little more of a hybrid version and then uh, we also have our uh, our summer camps the various summer summer camps that are going to be starting up here this summer after the school year um, and uh, so all all those things are you know fantastic things to see happening again quite frankly <laughs> after the last couple of years of uh, many of those things not taking place so uh, and of course uh, with the fourth of july festivities and so forth uh, you know, we, we coordinate with the school district with matt's team uh, certainly well in advance of that and given some of the overlap with the uh, the school property out there for the fireworks display so uh, happy to answer any questions thank you any questions for Mike? I've got a question. This is Joe, just a statement. Uh, I, you probably know, Mike, we're, uh, I know Matt uh, made what I think is a great decision to have a substantial presence uh, for the district uh, at Celebrate Davis. Uh, so putting my chamber hat on, that's fantastic. And putting my community hat on, it's fantastic. And well, my school hat. Also, I think it's great. To, I think it's going to be a great opportunity, first time in a couple of years, uh, to run the event. And I'm glad that we as a district are actively participating. In it. And I know, of course, the city does as well. No, I just want to echo those comments too. So, yeah. Okay. Given that, shall we move on to the before we go to long range calendar, maybe uh, we could handle the public comment from the person. Who's... Yes, we have USMC that's in attendance with their hand raised. Um, you'll have three minutes to provide public comment. Please start by stating your name for the record. Go Thanks, ahead. Uh, go ahead. Thanks. My, my name is JT. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So um, first of all, Every single uh, school board member is, is really talented. Um, same with our city council, you, you guys know that. But it doesn't mean that there aren't things that could be done better. And with regard to this strategic plan, I totally valid um, and agree with you guys that demographics are changing Davis. It's becoming too expensive for people with families, got it. But what, what I'm not hearing are taking ownership of the things that you can control. So as an example, at the uh, school board meetings, you've got a lot of parents, teachers, and students upset about a bell schedule. And a bell schedule has nothing to do with a child's income or anything like that. So it's it's duly noted that there are plenty of things that you cannot control, but I, I feel like there's not a lot of focus being placed on what you can control. And you absolutely have the ability to control your brand in, in a lot of ways. And the bell schedule is just one way. Um, and I'm not saying change your stance on the bell schedule, but I am saying DJ USD needs to fix the brand and, and work towards that. Um, you, you, you've got people in Davis posting on Facebook and next door. I'm from Davis. I moved back to Davis with my kids and blah, blah, blah. But I don't, I'm unhappy with DJ USD. So my kids are leaving the school. So I would say 90% of your um, forecasts are, are, are because of the, uh, actual things happening in the economy, but there's at least 10% that you guys can control. And I really hope that you start to focus on what you can control. The bell schedule could be one good start. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, is there any additional public comment? Any Anyone else? There is not. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that comment. And now we'll move on. Oops. Excuse me. Um, now we'll move on to long range calendar. Um, it says here in the next DJ uh, USD city two by two meetings are scheduled to resume September 21st, 2022. Um, and Matt, I'm assuming you and Mike came up with that as an agreed upon date. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Any comments or questions about that? Will or uh, Joe? None for me. 
No, that seems far enough away that I don't have to think about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, next, we'll go to announcements or comments. Uh, Will, do you have any announcements or comments? No, I don't think so. Um, uh, just, you know, thank you. I, I know that this is sort of on the city side, this isn't, a, you know, other than it being budget time, not a particularly, you know, uh, easily identifiable part of the year, but I know for the folks on the school board, but particularly for faculty and staff that this is the, the finish line is within sight now. And so we're very appreciative now that I've got all three in the school district. Uh, we're very appreciative of all the work that you guys have done this year. Another uh, challenging year with, you know, we lived through Omicron and all that stuff this year. And um, so hats off to, to all the school faculty and staff for the district. Thank you for all your work. Uh, thank you, Will. That we really appreciate hearing those uh, those comments, and glad to see your your children are doing well. Um, Joe, any announcements or comments? No, I, I just want to echo uh, Mike's statements. It is obviously we want to be careful and cautious with the you know rise in COVID rates, but. It is great to see people out in the community. I'm thrilled for the events and the activities that the city is going to be putting on with camps uh, and other things this summer. And obviously, we're all going to be careful, but just that, you know, the, the, that uh, connection across our community is, is so important. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that, and uh, and uh, I'm thrilled to see that uh, we're near the finish line for this for for our school year. And like Matt said, I am hopeful that. Um, the state budget is going to put us in a position where we can continue to move toward full funding for our schools. Um, but I appreciate this venue. Uh, I can't believe it's going to be September, but I think I'll, uh, like my colleague, uh, Mr. Arnold, I will struggle through the next few months of not having the two by two and uh, do my best to be prepared uh, in September. Um, well, I'm happy to take the summer off and I want to do that so I can empathize with all the DJ USD employees who will be taking some time off this summer to regenerate. So I think it's good for us to follow their practice. Yeah. Um, Matt or Mike, do you have any final announcements or comments? No, no, Mike, thank you. Okay, with that, um, I think I will adjourn the meeting. Do I need a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay. Always a popular item. All righty. Uh, roll call vote. Start with Will. Aye. Joe. Aye. And I vote aye as well. So this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you Have all. Good evening. Thanks, everybody. Aye.